Hi everyone, uh, I'm here with uh, John. He is, you're from the US? Yes. Yes. I live in the state of Tennessee at the Smoky Tennessee. Mountains. Very nice. But I'm originally from upstate South Carolina. Okay. And he's just completed the uh, Camino Portuguese from uh, Lisboa. From Ooh. Lisboa. Yes. Wow. How was that? Uh, it's a similar, I think, the, especially the section between Lisboa and, say, Valencia Tui. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, not even further down, um, Porto, is much like Vila La Plata. Yeah. Um, because there's albergues and stuff, hostels are few and far between, so you're doing like 20 uh, miles a day or, you know, 35, 30 kilometers. There's two days I did 40 kilometers. Wow. Just to, to make the stages that are that is in um, the guidebook. Yeah. And so it's much like that. And uh, once you get to Porto, there's really only one major hill that you climb that's really rough with the rocks. Yeah. And then from there on, it's, you know, it's just doing your stages and enjoying it. And the closer you get to Santiago, the closer together the albergues and everything gets. So So we're at the end of October. We're at, what, 27 today? Yeah, I got here yesterday. Yeah, 27. So I started on the 3rd, flew in. Okay. And uh, so like, what, 24 days or so? Yeah. So how was this different because now we're at the tail end of the COVID situation. Uh, what it was it, uh, different from prior Caminos. Yeah. Well, I think things in Portugal are much more relaxed than they are in Spain regarding the face yeah. masks. Yeah. The people there don't tend to really uh, enforce them that big when you go into a bar or to a, uh, what do you call it, like a cafe or yeah. whatnot. Now, yeah. of course, on the bus or train, Yep. Uh, going into pharmacy, that sort of thing, super Mercados, mm. mini Mercados, yes, yeah. but for the most part. And I think it's even, from the videos I've seen you do, I think it's even getting a little bit more relaxed here. But It it's, is it's, getting more relaxed it, here. But it, it's pretty much, it's they kind of enforce it more here. They're more vocal about it Yeah. down there. So I don't put it on unless I have to because yeah, yeah. I hate them. Yeah, yeah. You know. And, and my mentality is, is, and I'll ask you a question, because maybe you know, hmm. if 90 or maybe 90 plus percent of the people in Spain and in Portugal hmm. are vaccinated, hmm. what are you afraid of? Yeah. You know, what's the, what's yeah. The, I guess. And I know it's I, a government thing, too. I guess the young ones haven't been vaccinated, the under right. uh, 11, under, under 11, 12. Yeah. So I guess because even if you have the vaccine, you can still get it and pass it on. So I guess I guess that's the only. I understand. Thing. And, th and there's some also there's were so many people that died from it, and everyone in everyone. Spain know someone that died yes. from it. So that's why I think even we don't have to wear the mask outside. Yes. The law says I, you can take it off if you can have a meter and a half to the right. next person. But I, people it, have such a bad experience with this, so they just say, just in case, I'll just put it on. It's affected, I think, every family practically. Yeah. It's, you know, it truly is, you know, yeah. worldwide. Yeah, exactly. And in some areas worse than others for yeah. whatever particular reason. I think some of it might be genetics, some of it might be lifestyle and the health of people, you know. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, in, in Italy, I know there's a lot of elderly people that, Mm. A higher percentage of elderly people, I think, that it affected. Yeah, exactly. Uh, those, my, from my perspective, those that uh, were mobile tended to be mobile, and they would take nourishment. Then um, they did okay. But you know, if you get pneumonia yeah. and you stop moving, yeah. you're in trouble. Exactly. Especially if you have compromised immunity. Now, in Portugal, like Al Vegas and places like that, did they ask you for any? Proof of vaccination or something no, like that? No. no, all I had to have to come to Portugal and to come to Spain mm. was a negative COVID test. And I had no place has asked me for proof of vaccine. I've had one place ask me for the proof of the test. Okay. That was it. Yeah, yeah. And that was a, uh, a, a municipal Alberta. Yeah. So it doesn't seem like the COVID affected your Camino much at all? Well, not really, other than a mask yeah. and... You know, I think a lot of albergues, like you say, were closed yeah. because of that, and some of them didn't survive, recover from it. And yeah. I think a lot were took the time and effort to re remodel and everything. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you found it was difficult to find maybe a place. To I stay? never found a problem finding a place to stay. Okay, that's good. at all. I walked into one place, and it was a hostel, 
and some other people had reservations and I walked into the lobby mm. and I was looking and what I did is they had Wi-Fi there. I got on my Wi-Fi because I don't use uh, data in Europe because my provider wants $10 for a 24-hour period. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I got on Wi-Fi there and went to their website and booked the room and paid for it with my visa, visa card. Oh, okay. And then I sent the lady, or <laughs> I sent the, uh, the hostel a message with, um, via email and also messenger. Yeah. And the lady eventually came and let me in. Okay. But other than that, I had good. no problem finding a place to stay. That's good. So do you meet a lot of people? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah? You know, and, and the big thing is, is in Portugal, you have the Camino Santiago's this way, and people are going opposite direction yep. on, for Fatima. Yeah. And so uh, I think Fatima is more, I don't know how to say it, it's more promoted maybe is a better word or something? In Portugal. In Portugal. Yeah, I think in Portugal, Fatima is very well known. Yes. A tiny bit more. More so than Santiago. I think so, yeah. And so the markings were clearer. But if it's the same route, you see a shade of a yellow, yep. and you see the blue Fatima. Okay. You you know you got to yeah. go. But you didn't have trouble finding. I didn't have any trouble. No. A couple of times you get off the track, but yeah. if you're heading north, you have the sun in the right position. That's right. Sooner or later, you're going to cut the trail. That's right. <laughs> so when you, after Porto, did you go central? I, route I did the or? central route. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. You weren't thinking maybe the coastal maybe. Uh, or? I was in the navy for 20 years, and I've had enough. <laughs> I'm not, you know, we're mount where I grew up. We, you know, it's mountains. It's not the ocean, not the yeah. beaches. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's good. I preferred that route. Very good. So the only really big hill, like I say, out of, was out of Porto that one first day, and other than that, it was pretty much smooth sailing. And that's good. It's just one of those things, you know. You deal with the blisters, and you deal with the aches and pains, your feet swelling, and yeah. that's typical. You, you know, I walked 630 miles at home between April. And September, mm. and still, you know, it's just like hunting sheep or elk or doing a, a camino. When are you? When are you best? When are you most fit to do a camino? Yeah. It's when you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Then you're t shit. Yeah, that's true. Many people say that uh, haven't trained at all. The first few days is like training, and then you know, they... well, the wrong footwear. That's right. the biggest thing I saw. Yeah, the wrong footwear, no boots, the different, you know, the equipment. I had no idea what they're getting into. Yeah. I, and my cousin and I both uh, tend to, we doctor a lot of feet. Mm, yeah. And so, yeah. Blisters mainly. Well, that's good. Now, when John emailed me, uh, I asked him if he was willing to maybe share some of his stuff in his backpack, because I think people at home may be, be interested in hearing from someone that has walked, maybe what they brought with them so they can get some ideas for their own backpack that they may be planning for next year. So I was wondering if, if you were willing to share sure, some of your sure, sure. Of backpack. What did you bring? Did you find something that you put in your pack this time that you'd maybe end up not using? Or did you learn something this time? That I think you always do. And I wound up carrying things that I picked up along the way. Like yeah. I picked up a bottle of port, yeah. <laughs> the Blanco port, and I carried it all the way. But it's not in my pack right now. It's yeah. back at the alberg. Yeah. But yeah. Well, you know, a hat is, is an important factor because... You want to keep the sun off. Yep. And my first Camino was uh, Vida La Plata. I wore short sleeves and I had uh, not blisters, but sun poisoning. Mm. So I switched to the longer sleeve, the same type of shirt, and I haven't had any problem from that. That's, so, that's very good advice, that's a especially consideration in the summer, I In guess. the summertime. Yeah. And that's, this was springtime, but yeah. you know, the Vida La Plata, you're going up through the Meseta instead yeah. of across. That's true. So yeah. it made that's a big true. difference for me. Yeah. And I, the first time I carried three pair of pants, so now I only carry two. But basically, I carry three sets of T-shirts, three sets of underwear, and three sets of socks. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a brand in the U.S. that is, uh, they're 70 percent or more merino wool, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, have a lifetime warranty. Oh, that's good. You pay about 20, depending on which version you get of them. Mm. But you pay about twenty-four to twenty-six U.S. dollars for a pair, but they have a lifetime warranty. Wow! So it makes a difference there. Yeah, that's true. So good boots. Yep. And make sure they're broken in. Mm. I met a fellow on Camino Inglés that was from Ireland, and he made a last-minute decision to do it with his son, and he borrowed a pair of. He's a runner, so yeah. he was fit. 
He borrowed a pair of shoes from his friend, Boots. Yep. And it rained, and he gave his dry socks to his son to use, and his whole sole of his foot, you know, behind oh, the toes, yeah, this yeah, pad yeah. right here, yeah. was completely blistered. Oh. And he had probably, it ended his Camino. Wow. He could not, you know. Yeah. I said, you need. That's important. Yeah. I said, I cannot doctor that. You need to go see the the doctor or pharmacy or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he went home early. Yeah. So again, you know, taking care of your feet. Another one is hmm. hydration. Yep. Let me move this hat and phone out of the way. I think hydration is critical. And I don't like the bladder. Yes, so you have a bottle. Uh, my cousin uses a bladder. Mm -hmm. And you never know when you're empty. Yes. And he would run out of water and I always had to, I would share water. So I carry two of these okay. full of water. Now that's about a liter and a half or uh, probably two Probably so. I, I, you'd have to look. Yeah. But yeah, I, I fill them full of water yeah. because the worst thing to have. Because that's you know, weight too if you have two of those. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so, but the thing is, is you can share water if someone runs out. That's true. Or so you need to wash somebody's feet if they fall down or whatnot. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, is uh, we always say if you're walking the Camino and you're not having to go behind the bushes, you're not hydrating. Yeah. And when you go, if it's yellow and not clear, mm -hmm. you're not hydrating enough. Yep. So I make sure I carry enough water. And if I don't use it all, exactly. it's water. So the water yeah. is a big thing. Good. All right. REI backpack, I see. Yes, Trail it's REI. 70. So it's 70 liters. It's a 70 liter, but you know, I don't carry that much weight. Okay, well, I have my, my Briarly. Is that what you use? Guidebook, yeah. Good, yep. And it's like any guidebook. There's good and bad parts of it. Yeah. Mainly the maps. I'll read a little bit before I go, mm -hmm. but I don't carry it in my hand. Yeah. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, is know what's available as you go and where you're looking to spend the night at, you know, in that stage, mm -hmm. what's available. And I tend to look for the municipal albergues. Yeah. And most of the municipal albergues in Spain were open, but the kitchens were closed. So. Good. I carry yep. oh, wipes. Wipes, okay. So when you go to the toilet, you have something to... Uh, exactly, and you have a Ziploc bag for zip it. Ziploc bag. I pretty much put most of everything in a Ziploc bag. Uh, a napkin, or not a napkin, but a neckerchief. Yeah. Because, you know, you constantly are blowing your nose. One of the things I want to say for Americans... When you're walking <laughs> mayonnaise. The, when you're walking the uh, Camino yeah. and you ask for a sandwich, typically ham and cheese, yep. uh, in Spain they will put butter on it uh, if you want it, mm. and Portugal too, but they don't have mayonnaise and they don't have mustard. Oh. And so that's, but you can buy those packages at the supermarket. Yes, yes. and bring them with you. And mm -hmm. you might want to consider that if you want mayonnaise or mustard on your sandwich. And the same is true of, of black pepper. So you have to ask for pimientos negra. Yeah. They might have white pepper, yeah. which if you use that is fine, but it's a little bit stronger. So don't use as much. Yeah. But that's the thing. And, you know, tomato on a sandwich is kind of unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. A roll of all-purpose paper. That's exactly right. Because you never know what bush you have to go behind. And then the cup. A couple of cups because you're sharing water yep. or you're sharing some, some wine with someone. So Good. That's good. Um, I carry my phone charger. And you'll see the little adapter I have. Yep. And tape this, it on there. You know why I tape them on there? It doesn't, so it doesn't fall off. The outlets are in, inset, right? Yeah. So when you push this in, if you don't have it taped together, when you pull this out, it stays. That stays in. Yes. And it's difficult to get fingers in there to pull it out. Ah. So that's I do that all the time, and I have a long cord. Yeah. So I can plug it in and lay in the in the bed. You might have get and the... and it's and it's heavy duty. Yep. So I can do that. I have my own clothes pins. Very good. With your name on it. With my name on them. Good. Um, and this is, uh, I think, is good because when you wash your clothes and hang them on the line, hmm. is a lot of times people get up early in the morning and it's dark out and they're gathering clothes if they left them out all night and they might get the wrong clothing. Yeah. If they see your clothes pin is on your clothing, 
then it's then it's I had yours. a person took my towel once and left theirs. So uh -huh. I have a little packet here with my uh, earbuds. Earbuds. So that way you can listen to YouTube or whatever. Yeah. Listen to Ivar and there you go. <laughs> and not disturb your neighbor. Uh, good. And that's well. I have one of these left from off of my. Hmm. Uh, and that's trekking all in the poles. top pocket. That's, that's good. the top pocket. So that's... Now, trekking poles, I think, are important. Mm. Uh, when I first went on um, Via de la Plata, I was not enthused about trekking poles. Because that was your first one, Via de la Plata? Yes. Yeah. I went with my cousin. And I learned with just one stick or one pole, for me, this motion, using this shoulder, mm. that muscle on the back, mm. the opposite side is not being... Yeah. And that side will cramp. Mm. But if you have both, you got the motion, your hands are not swelling, yep. and you have that 20% advantage, especially going uphill, going down hills, um, what do you call it? Um, crossing muddy areas, streams sure. and whatnot, you, yeah. for your balance. So you use control your speed. I, use, I use, do use walking sticks. I highly recommend them. Hmm. It really doesn't matter what kind you get as long as they're sturdy and adjustable. Yeah. I guess people don't know, maybe used to wear, using them. You I know? see a lot of people with just one. Yeah. And I oh. learned for myself, yeah. it's not the way yeah. to go. I could see that. Okay, I'll throw this over this out of the way. Very good. And uh, I have two side pouches. Oh, down there. This is for the stuff you can take out before without quickly. taking off your backpack. You know what that is? It's a space blanket. Yeah. So that if you have to get caught in a snowstorm yeah. in the springtime, which we did on the Via de la Plata, uh -huh. two days outside of Salamanca, yeah. you have a space blanket. So it's just an emergency thing. Just to keep dry? To keep warm? It keep dry and keep warm. Because, oh. you know, you, it reflects mm -hmm. the stone. The stone. You know, if you're going the French Camino. Or, yeah, you can. Yeah. Or you can drop it at the Cruz, crosses. Cruz de Ferro. Yep. And then over here, I have plastic toothpicks. Okay. And I have another rubber toilet tissue. Very good. And I just have some acorns and some walnuts. I picked yeah, up. yeah, yeah. So just stuff I picked up on the trail. So that's that. So that's it's you know easily to get to. Then in the pack. You, like you said, you had three sets of, of change. So three. you would arrive at a place, you would wash one Typically set? Typically wash one set, wash your socks. And I have one set on you, one, one set well, wet, so and one set dry. Now, I no. cheat a little bit. Okay. Now, maybe some people won't appreciate this, but when I go into the shower, I have my dirty t-shirt and dirty underwear. Mm -hmm. I use that as my washcloths. Okay. And then I finish washing the clothes while I'm in the shower. They're, they're washed. Yeah. So all I have to do is once I've towed off and put on the clean set, mm. those are ready to hang up on the line. There you go. Or throw in a dryer. Exactly. So it's just something that I kind of gravitated towards doing. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes your clothes don't dry because of inclement weather. Yeah. So you hang them on your you Stick them on the... Like everybody does. And you'll yep. see people walking down with their underwear and T-shirt, socks <laughs> hanging off their pack. As long as everyone's doing it. I have one... Pull over. Very good. Uh, yeah, because it gets cold. I mean, especially now. In, this morning was like six degrees. Right. Well, yeah. um, I started wearing this about three, four days before getting to Santiago. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a polar fleece. My son had bought it for me, and yeah. I had it on the Via de la Plata. Mm -hmm. It's just a pullover. Um, I put everything in Ziploc bags mm -hmm. because even if your pack gets wet, and I do have a rain cover, Yeah. Uh, Everything inside is dry. Yep. These are uh, sandals. Afternoon. Yes. Sandals. And good. some people, if they wear the waterproof ones, they can shower in them if that's a concern. Yep. But when you're walking, you know, in the city streets and stuff, yeah, uh, you need some footwear. Sure. And if, of course, you know, in the albergues, they, they want you to take your shoes off. Yeah. Okay. Now this is my first aid kit. All right. And I have a little bit of everything in here. Okay. So I have uh, toothpaste. Now, is this something that you kind of, over the time, you Over walk, the time, you yeah, kind it of evolves. Stuff? Yeah, uh, it, it evolves. Your first Camino, it wasn't it Not wasn't as like big, that. No. no. So, you know, in, in Europe, 
people use compede. Mm -hmm. And in the U.S., we have what we call moleskin. Yep. And I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. I've heard of them. Okay, it's just, uh, and we buy them at, like, Walmart. Mm -hmm. And you cut it to size, and you see it's kind of fabric on one side, yeah. and you peel it, stick and peel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sticks better, and if you need to take it off, it doesn't pull the skin as badly as mm. Compede can. Yeah. But I typically drain the blister and put this on and leave it on until it gets wet enough to where it wants to come off. Yeah. But I always carry this, and, you know, I've used this on a lot of people's feet. Uh, I have a small first aid kit with basically uh, some uh, towelettes and sure. band-aids, mm -hmm. uh, another bag of band-aids, a little bit of shaving cream, and I don't shave every day. This is my own medication. personal medication. Yep. Toothbrush. A toothbrush with a guard for your ears. Mm -hmm. More of this. Now this I have... I have a needle in here yeah. and thread. For so for blisters, blisters, I thread the needle and run it through the blister, both sides. Mm -hmm. So the blister's like here. You run it through, and the thread is hanging out, and you snip it with the scissors. Oh, so neat. the thread hangs out. That way, it, your skin doesn't seal up. and the, mm. But it collapses the blister. Yep. But the skin is still intact. Yep. And then I put the, you could put compete or, or the mole so skin on you, top of that. If you pull the thread out, what would happen then? Wouldn't it be the same? It, 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 well, it could seal up. Oh, it could seal up again. Seal back up oh, again. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I don't get fresh skin. I only just do to the part that's raised with yeah, the blister. Yeah. That's to drain it because you've got that bubble. Yep. You put Compete on it, you still got the pressure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So you do that and then you put Compete or... or mole skin. Mole skin yeah. on it. And that seems to work. Unless yeah. it's very, very serious and you need to see a doctor. Sure. Because, you know, you don't want to get an infection. Yep. So I use that. Good. Razor blades. And the ever... Go to the pharmacy and get some ibuprofen. Yes. <laughs> and if you have severe blister and you treat yourself and you need to walk the next day, I eat something and I take 800 milligrams. These are 400 each. Okay. And that'll pretty much get you through at least half the day. Good. Because, you know, it's no good walking on. And this is tape, rubberized type tape. Mm -hmm. um, I'm out of gauze pads because doctoring other people's feet. Yeah. It seems the ladies tend to have get blistered more than oh yeah the most mm. more toothpaste corkscrew okay good <laughs> uh this is the iodine uh, someone gave to me yep chapstick yeah for your now chapstick if you get cracked skin on your fingers mm -hmm. rub chapstick on it it'll take the sting away oh fingernail clippers very good razor antacid and I had, had no problem this trip. Um, you know, this is like for if you have the uh, fungus. Uh, athlete's foot. Yes. Ah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a uh, Equate is just the Walmart. Okay. Uh, the brand. Generic brand. Yeah. I'm sure you can get a lot of these things. You can get, yeah, at a the lot of these. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I buy it at home and I just have it with me sure. because the first day someone's got problems in the albergue and. You're prepared, you can take care of what they need. So that's great. And usually I either put it in the this pack portion or here so it's easily accessible. Yeah. And I like to have these up high so they're easily accessible. Exactly. Because that way as soon as you go in the alberg, they want you to take off those uh, shoes and just put them somewhere. Exactly. So Kind of a and I'm sure I'm sure this is very personal for it's a personal choice. Yeah, exactly. It, it, you 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 have to determine what you know. To me, a, com, a camino is a personal thing. Exactly. It's it's your camino. It's a lot of it's a lot of the questions we get on the forum too. It's like there's no right answer to any no, question. No, no. And what I do is not necessarily right for everybody else. Exactly. Yeah. And I understand that. Yeah. I have a rain jacket. Good. I don't. I, you don't do the poncho thing. I don't do the poncho mm -hmm. because the seam on the sides, the mm -hmm. crack, the wind mm -hmm. blows them in. Yeah. They're flapping. Yeah. So I wear a rain jacket. I don't wear the rain pants. Mm -hmm. I do have a pair of uh, gaiters. Okay. Uh, but this my son bought for me, and it works very well. Good. And see, I can wear this on top of this, or just this alone, and it helps cut the wind. 
Yeah, that's true. So, it, it, that helps even for the heat a little bit. I mean, yes, it keeps, yeah, the, yeah, keeps because, your heat inside. Because it doesn't have, this one doesn't have the vents mm -hmm. under the arms. Yep. Okay, now this is dirty laundry. Good. This is the other two pair yep. that I need to wash, and I have to find the... There's one up the street I can show you. Okay. <laughs> My Alberg, uh, he has a washer and dryer, but I don't think it's accessible to me. Okay. Then I have this bag is my towel and a washcloth. And this is nothing more than a microfiber, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. Quick this drying. The whole secret's quick drying and lightweight. Exactly. Yep. So. And you bought most of this, I guess, all of, all of it at home, right? Yeah. 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 There's very little of it, you know, as far as gear that I've picked up overseas. It's mostly stuff at home. Yep. Um, Okay, that's it. Uh, one more. There's my gate ears. Exactly. Nope, nope, that's a spare pair of pants. Okay. Uh, these... These are the gate ears. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And that's pretty much it. No, one oh, more thing. More. All right. I haven't used it this time. That's but good. Have, the stuff at the bottom, you never took it off. Right? I have a hat yep. and a pair of gloves. Yep. Uh, the hat has a lamp on it, and then there's a spare uh, converter. Converter, yep. and it's for multiple countries. For the electricity, yeah. Not just for Spain and Portugal, because of all the different outlets. Now in here is my... Your cover. Rain cover. Very good. Now, for those that are traveling from overseas, mm -hmm. my cousin turned me on to this. We have a duffel bag. Oh yes, yeah. so when you, you ship put, it back. You put your pack in, mm -hmm. and this way the baggage handlers aren't pulling all your straps off. Yes, it doesn't get stuck anywhere. Right, right. it doesn't yeah. get stuck and get ripped off. Yep, so it's good just idea. lightweight. And then down here, <laughs> you didn't know what you was getting into, did you? I <laughs> No, but this is good, you know, because yeah. this is, I think, useful for people at home. And see, I went with my cousin. Yeah. He, that was his fourth, my first, Vida La Pata. Oh, so he kind of and guided so he, you a little bit. He knew, he gave me input. Mm. And so... Well, that's a sleeping bag. This is a sleeping bag liner. Oh, a liner. And yeah, so it's lighter in weight, not did as heavy. Did you use that at the albergues, or did you... I've used it this time, I think, three nights, mm. maybe four. Yeah. And... It was the biggest one that REI had for sale. Mm -hmm. However, it's a little bit small for me because I have wide shoulders. Yeah. But you can feel how heavy it is. Okay? It's not, no, it's not, not that heavy. Not heavy at all. No. And I see a lot of people carrying a heavy sleeping bag oh, yeah. that's tied on the back. What I do is I unzip it because it's cocoon. Mm -hmm. I tuck my feet into the bottom and then I spread it open so it just lays over me like yeah. a quilt. Okay. And that mm. keeps me warm. That's good. So that's what I do there. So, especially if you're walking in the fall and in, in the spring, maybe. Well, yeah, spring. Least. Yeah. In the summer, maybe. Summer, I don't think it. it again, it depends, depends. on. Depends. It yeah. depends on if they provide a blanket or not yeah. in the alberg. And some of these monasterios that have got the walls this thick and yes. the stone, yeah. they can be cool they can at be night because they don't heat them. Yep, that's true. Or if it's raining outside. Yep. So, that's yeah. great. So that's well, pretty much, and you know, of course. And how much did this weigh? Did you pack? This well, pack? Did, you, did you weigh it? I weighed it before I left without yes. the water. Yeah. And it weighed about almost 20 pounds. How much is that in kilos? Uh, I don't know. Let, I me, to... let me do the calculation because people ask me and I'm not fluent with that. I don't so let's see. Uh, is it... Let's do mass, pounds to kilos, 20. That's 9.07 kilos. Okay. Somewhere I'm carrying, with the water, and I had the extra wine in there, I'm probably carrying about 10, 11, 10 kilos. I think that's pretty normal. And you know the rule of thumb is 10% yeah. of your body weight. Yeah. Le less, less is better. Ten, yes. Yes. No, but I think this, this, this is good. Yeah. So. So as long as, you know, your back can carry it too. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for showing us this. And uh, anything else you wanted to tell people about the Portuguese? Well, like I can we say finish? the Portuguese for the novice, I yep. would recommend starting in Porto or Tui only. Yep. Again, get more information, be prepared. 
do some training, but it doesn't matter how much training you do. Yeah. You're still gonna it's you're still gonna have blisters yeah. on the Camino. I think it's I think it's just a natural occurrence. You know, there's Yeah. I know a lot of people use uh, Vaseline on their toes. Mm-hmm. A lot of people I heard people that get these little silk silk stockings that they put on their feet and I guess there's a little piece oh. over each toe to keep them apart. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I like the I like the hundred percent or no the seventy plus percent merino wool socks. Yeah, because yep. even if if your feet get wet, the wool will keep you dry. A lot of people are using and that's an important thing. Are using that wool, the wool so, socks. I've seen the microfibers, the, the quick drying stuff, the lightweight quick drying stuff. Something that will wick the moisture away from your skin. Yeah, and very good. So now, when's the next one? You're gonna do you have next year? Yeah, next year. Yeah, what it will be, I'm not sure yet. Okay. I've got different. People thinking, you know, type things. So, Very good. Uh, there are some people that want to do Camino Frances, but they want they they're limited to the school break. So you're looking June, July, and August, early August, yeah. which is a hot time to do it and a yeah. lot of competition. And next year, so I don't know. Holy year, holy year. That's it's a big thing. Be busy. The holy year. It's going to be busy. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for coming in and uh, sharing your, your story. Yeah. So yeah, I've, this is my third one. Yep. And, and That's great. You know, to me, a Camino is, is a microcosm of life. Yeah. Humanity, so yep. to speak. Yeah. And, and you can have your own philosoph- philosophical views of it, mm. but we're all going to the same place. The goal is for, for walking this Camino, you're coming to Santiago. It's that yes. one focal point. Yeah. Right? And there's different people from different nationalities, different languages, different experiences, different ages. Did you feel, because I feel like a lot of people are talking about that community when they're walking, especially if they walk the Frances, when there's a lot of pilgrims walking. Did you feel that spirit also on the oh, Portuguese? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, there, yeah. yeah. But for a lot of people, it was, they were, there was their first Camino, yeah. and they're getting their feet wet, they didn't know what to expect. You know, they hear about the Camino, but they haven't done a lot of research, they haven't got together with someone that's done it before yeah. to get that input. Yeah. So they really, you know, don't know what to expect, and once... Uh, the, you meet someone, or they meet someone that's experienced doing the Camino. Yeah. They kind of learn and they gain the insight. And you know, to me, it's that focal point, and you're coming. It's just like life. Mm. And if you want to be philosophical about it, we're all going to in life's journey. We're and they have up and down days. Yeah. You're all going. We're either all going to the grave or go to see our maker. Yeah. So you know, it's just like life. And, exactly. That's you know, great. That's what in. How else can you see Spain? Yes, just or walking through it. Walking through it, Eating smelling the, the roses. Exactly. And I picked figs. I picked a few grapes. Yep. Uh, the uh, I did not know the Asian persimmons were, were growing here. Oh, yeah, the, the 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 ones that you can eat right like an apple. That oh. they're not astringent. You know, they're not oh, bitter. I don't know about that one. Yeah. Uh, and I saw the uh, the bigger um, quinces mm-hmm. that they make the mellow. Uh, Melamel out of, yeah, the original, yeah. And I saw those, a few apple trees, but never did, you know, never was able to to get any apples off the, <laughs> off the trail. Yeah, I, I don't venture off the trail that far. Yeah, yeah. If it's yeah. hanging, if it's hanging over the fence, yeah, then it's for a, you. a few blackberries. Um, That's great. I don't know what else. Yeah. Oh, the uh, I did not know that they were growing um, kiwi fruit. Oh yeah. But they're not ripe yet. No, maybe you're, this year is not a good kiwi year either. Well, we I, have, was told, I was told they don't get ripe until like November. Maybe, yeah. My father-in-law has a lot of kiwis. And this, but this year is, is a bad kiwi year. <laughs> but I was, there, were some, there were some figs that were like this big around. Oh, yeah, figs are in, figs. This is the time for figs. I enjoyed figs. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for coming in well, and, thank and you. sharing your experience.